Hello and welcome back to Direct Strike, another version of the weekly brawl, and we're going to be having a lot of fun with it. Today we're playing as Mengsk with the mutators of Synergy, all three waves spawn together. And then Triple Auras, you guys have seen this brawl and I don't know if you're sick of it or not, but I am certainly not because it's just way too much fun. If you guys want to see more brawls like this, make sure to hit that like button, get that video engagement up. And we'll see what kind of shit I get to. Oh, wow. Yeah, it is indeed a lot of buildings. All right. That's uh, that's something to work on. So I'm just going to open up here with Zerglings just to have something to contest the middle. Now, of course, of course, all of our waves spawn together. So it looks like it's only me versus one of their opponents is spawned things. But, you know, we're going to we're going to claim our middle bonus for this and with it get effectively six six gas worth of income for the team which is quite quite good that's that's how you get rich in this now they do have a nova i am questioning what i actually want to go for here in terms of abilities cooldown doesn't help all that much the cooldown speed for tyke i'm oh, sorry for mengsk really only applies to the pride of august grad and also the emperor shadow nothing else has any meaningful abilities now life is good because it does mean my zerglings are going to be going to be tankier but so is fire because that means our our troopers are going to be better i think i'll go with life just so that we can survive some of the aoe that's going to happen i do not really want to be going with troopers and zerglings i generally end up having a line of them because they're just good to have somewhat but especially with a, a tychus on the field yeah, I need to be getting siege tanks out here. So for, we're going to get siege tank based things. So for that, it's going to be range and move speed. And then we're going to go ahead and grab... Oof, yikes. You know what? I'll just grab another range and move speed. Because we can have megaton range... Mega range siege tanks would be quite good. Let me go ahead and get this. Yeah, they do have, they do have a lot of heroes out. And for that, we want to be careful. One of the things I have to be super careful with. Mengsk is critically vulnerable to mind control and as long as they have a cooldown based tychus on the field uh just them having a couple a couple vega units on the field can absolutely not only ruin my day as a mangsk but turn my entire super expensive wave against my teammates it's uh yeah, mind control, as as my teammate has said, is very, very good versus us. So I'm never going to be building Aegis Guards or really anything that gets close enough to get mind controlled. Thankfully, we have Siege Tanks with plus two range, so that's going to be great. And considering I have extra thick Zerglings here, I can kind of have them in the front line, distracting the opponents while the Siege Tanks are getting some damage output. That's going to be, going to be quite good. Of course... We did have the option to get bonus damage, but I'm not too concerned about adding plus two damage to a siege tank. Once these things siege up, it's plus two damage is such a trivial amount. Yikes. I know I just put out the video where we have serious spam with the with the self-destruct turrets. So I'm not surprised to see it here, but if you guys saw from that video, uh, me having Zerglings and even upgraded hp troopers not going to survive very well versus versus all that aoe so i'm not not too keen to get those troopers here i just need to focus on getting lots of siege tanks look at this 122.5 damage at 17 range that's gonna be delicious it's so far away and sniping at all the things uh, i should probably get an imperial witness just slap it right in front that way it gets the extra vision we can get some extra extra shots. We have plus range, but none of our units can see that far, so we need units to be spotters for our siege tanks here. There we go. Of course, there is always going to be the opportunity for their units to push up onto our tanks and mind control our tanks, but at that point, it's not as big of a concern. If our backline is dying, I don't have to worry about our frontline anymore because it's already dead. <laughs> uh, some bad, uh... Isn't that a fun little fun little side effect of the way this direct strike works? Let me go ahead and go to third gas. Uh, I do want to gas kind of greedily here. Typically, I wouldn't, just because, especially in synergy, but direct strike in general, you don't want to gas too greedily because owning the middle is far far better for income than anything else. So the more units get thrown down, the better. 
But strictly, strictly being Manx, there's a select few other commanders that tend to have this kind of uh, kind of synergy. But Manx gains experience points based on your income, so I absolutely need to have four gases so I can get the maximum possible experience gain. Because experience gain is what's going to keep our is going to keep our tanks going. We need those we need those level three tanks in order to really get the upgrade for the siege speed. We need those level three tanks to really get this to get all the bonuses going. Because look at that plus forty percent splash damage radius. It's, it's huge, and then plus two weapon and vision range. We need that. And that's something we can only get via via the experience. So we're going to be gassing up. I don't want to necessarily auto gas because like if they really start pushing onto our base then I'm going to be concerned but the moment we have any amount of leeway here I will absolutely be gassing up. Come on, almost there. Almost there. Get another hundred minerals. These siege tanks so expensive. Go zealots! Chop all of my zerglings down. Let the zerglings fulfill their purpose by distracting the zealot. The mega zealot. Alright, nice. Now we're up to two siege tanks, which is quite good. First one only having gained 19 kills so far. But they do a lot of damage, even when they're not getting kills. It's about the best I can hope for. And siege up. And splash! Just take down that heavy unit. Oh, that chest does so much damage. Uh, this is gonna be good. This is absolutely gonna be good. These siege tanks actually do pretty well versus uh, the swarm hosts and even the stalkers that that have been basically dominating the meta of this particular brawl. As you guys have seen that, it's just the amount of spam is ridiculous. Speaking of which, my teammate isn't going strictly swarm house. What has he got? Got energy regen, one cooldown in life. Uh, I see why he's not terribly going swarm host spam. Uh, one cooldown is pretty brutal. Life makes them stick around longer, so that would actually be pretty good for it. Uh, I think he's just more concerned about having a front line, considering a lot of us don't. Like, I'm not going for much of a front line. I have the swarm style, which helps, but it really doesn't last very long. So he's just trying to keep things... Keep things going. I have four tanks. We have so much siege as a team here. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> we need some anti-air. Um, let me go ahead and grab one of these. I realize it can be mind controlled and it will fly forward to a point where it can get mind controlled, but I think that's not going to be too big of a concern right now. It does have the anti-air missiles, so that is that is a concern. Ah, question would be a good choice for this, as no one really has a lot of good anti-air, because we do want to clear those banshees. As long as these Banshees, like Sky Fury's got some good range, especially the bonus range. We're kind of like beating up their usual strategies just with range. Because look at these turrets here, they do they do damage, high single target damage. You guys have seen me use it. But they're so far, my, my Sky Fury is literally so far away that it's, it's not getting close enough to get shot out of the sky. Bonuses of having plus two range, that's up to plus, that's up to 11 range, that's kind of ridiculous. So I'm, I'm surprised at how well this is working, and it's only because we have so much range they can't easily deal with it. But I don't really want to be investing more into the Sky Fury for two reasons. Uh, one, they don't have that much air. Uh, this this one Sky Fury is absolutely slaughtering everything in the air. Like it's it's actually kind of ridiculous how effective that is. Uh, and also, if I invest more into the air, that's just asking to. Uh, Asking to get jumped on by something like these turrets. Like they have plenty of anti air to shut down my, my Sky Fury. It's just, um. It's just that my unit is staying too far back. And if something happens that it. that causes him to move forward, my Sky Fury to move forward, then I lose my Sky Fury. And I will lose it very, very easily to what is a much, much stronger force than my Sky Fury could deal with. Like, look. The moment Mojo gets up on, on the Sky Fury, like it's, it just shuts it all down. They've got a lot of anti-air. The moment the Sykes, the Sirius, is, they get within turret range of my Sky Fury, it goes away. They have a lot of anti-air. So I don't really want to be investing into air. I just want to make sure that they aren't completely destroying us from the air. That's, that's all I need to do. This one Sky Fury is enough to stop that. I need you getting this. I've got the fourth gas, which is excellent. So I can get maximum, 
maximum experience points for more siege tanks. Are they still getting more, more aircraft? They're up to four Sirius now, which is always a concern. Once he gets up to like six Sirius, then he can absolutely... He even has some weapon speed. Yeah, they, he could absolutely switch out a few rounds and cause problems for us. So I do want to be mindful of that. Uh, mind you, my siege tanks are far enough away that they probably won't get affected because, you know, if you could just outrange them, it's, it's a good experience. But, like, Fear Serious is a, is a quick way to end the game. I suppose quick way isn't the right way to put it. It ends the game quickly once you get it out onto the field. The problem is that it's very difficult to get out onto the field, because you have to have a lot of serious. It's like the ultimate endgame. If you survive to get the strategy of multiple, multiple, multiple uh, fear round upgrades, that you just kind of win the game. But getting there is, getting there can be problematic to say the least. Oh, wow, I'm actually way low on experience here. So this is this tech is going to be, despite having for gas and owning the middle. Uh, we're kind of short on experience, just because tanks, they, they require a lot of experience. So what I'm going to do, do we have, we do have biological. I'm going to go ahead and grab some, some medevacs, just spend some money that doesn't cost any, doesn't cost any uh, experience points here. For that, I could use Imperial Intercessors. Uh, that doesn't really help my units, because my units are Zerglings, and Zerglings don't have enough HP to survive long enough to be healed. But my teammate does. My teammate has vile roaches, which have been given biomass, so they're up to they get plus five armor before before upgrades, which is kind of it's really difficult to deal with that. But you guys know how that works. Hey, if you guys want to see, you know what? I, I I've been kind of holding off on doing this because, frankly, uh, getting getting the RNG necessary to pull it off is a little bit crazy. But if you guys want to see see Abathur Roaches with full-on plus six armor and then plus biomass and plus three upgrades so it's, it brings like a total of like 23 armor which makes which means even Tychus like the big single target damage destroyer unit even he does like 0.5 damage per shot to these things uh, if you guys want to see that make sure to make sure to hit that like button leave a comment down below if you guys commented it enough I will I will take the time to try to RNG that into into a video because that's a that's a grind and a half trying to make that one happen. If you guys want to see it, let me know, and I will spend the time to get that for you guys. I think that'll... It, it, it is fun to see, although it's extremely rare to actually have happen. Uh, we still don't have enough experience points to really get... To really get that, uh, that other siege tank going, but it is a work in progress. So I've got to spend a little bit more money. I'll spend... What I like to do with the Imperial Witnesses, I like to have two of them. So typically, typically you, you don't get two of them in this example. But the reason the reason I get two of them, I'll build it here, is because I could turn this guy off. He no longer does Patriot mode. But but in Cursus, why don't you why don't you want to have Patriot mode on? Doesn't Patriot mode give your your dudes extra move speed and weapon speed? Yes, and it's great. It also prevents the observer from really observing things because it sits so far back that it doesn't provide the vision and the detection that the observer typically would do from that you would typically want out of oh this is really bad for them. Oh this is really bad for them. Yep. Way too many siege tanks on the base. That is over. Alright guys, if you want to see more episodes just like this, more outranging them into death kind of shenanigans, make sure to hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. But for now, I will see you guys later.